완두콩 스프링 런던 파티큘러와 한국에서도 유명한 비프 웰링턴 부활절 전에 먹는 캔티쉬 푸딩파이 피쉬앤칩스 외에도 맛있는 영국 음식은 많습니다 친근한 사이먼 스미스 대사보고에 초대를 받아 완두콩 스프가 영국에서는 왜 스모그로 불리게 됐는지 들어봤습니다 안녕하세요 저는 주한 영국 대사 사이먼 스미스입니다 반갑습니다 안녕하세요 It's a very great pleasure to welcome you here to our embassy resident. 특히 uh, 특히 uh, 영국의 음식 생활, 영국의 음식 문화에 대해서 uh, 몇 가지 비밀에 대해서 uh, 이야기를 하려고 합니다. 아니요, 아니요, 잘하시는요. <laughs> yeah, 그리고 so um, I think probably I'll just we have our first um, yeah. our first dish to eat. This is uh, this is called a London particular. I will explain why London particular. There are there are in London. Many years ago, there was uh, a very serious problem of air pollution. And there was, uh, as a lot of people have this impression of London and the impression of Britain, that there is always fog. It's not the case these days. Our, our atmosphere is much cleaner than it used to be. But right up until, probably until the 1950s, um, London used to have regular fog and smog and sometimes it was a sort of greenish fog because of the, all the pollution in the air and so there were two names for this one was the london particular now particular obviously is like the particles so the, you know, it's a little bit like the sort of mise monji but the other name for it was a pea super and of course you can hear the the the, the reason for that is pea soup which is what we have here we have pea soup um, and some people thought that the, this color of the smog, the greenish smog, was, was a little bit like pea soup. And it was also really thick and you couldn't see through it. So it was like walking through soup. So here we have this, this and this is pea soup. So this is soup made of peas, made of, made of nice green peas. Mm -hmm. But because it's pea soup, it has this alternative name, which is the London particular. Both the names for, for the fog are, are, are used in, in Charles Dickens. So you, you can read, he, he uses both the names. He, he, it's a London particular um, or a pea souper. British people love uh, eating green peas, basically. British diet was not particularly varied Peas, green peas, have always been very important. Just a generation ago, a lot of people grew their own peas in their gardens. You know, in, in, in Britain, a lot of people do have a small garden mm. with a small vegetable patch, yes. and they grow some vegetables. Mm. And peas are actually very easy to grow. Yeah. You can eat this very, very hot as well. You can mm. either eat it really, really, absolutely piping hot. Cold soups that you can find in France, in Spain. But British people think soup has to be either warm or hot. This is a very um, uh, well-known uh, British recipe for beef, which is called Beef Wellington. Wellington is many things. Wellington was a very famous uh, military commander of the early 19th century, remembered as the, um, as I say, a great, um, a great army man yeah. participating in the wars against Napoleon. Wellington gave his name also to Wellington Boots. You know these Wellington boots that uh, the rubber boots that people wear to walk around in the mud and the rain and so on. We don't really know why this um, or whether this has any real connection with uh, with with the Duke of Wellington, but it's called Beef Wellington, and when people see it on the menu, they'll think, "Ah, oh, Beef Wellington." That's about the Duke of Wellington, so they associate it with him. That thing. Quite a lot of. Um traditional British recipes where meat is wrapped in pastry. For instance, pasties, mm. Cornish pasties, mm. or, um, where you have meat and 
potato mm -hmm. and gravy all in a pastry oh, case. Yeah. Mm, and okay. traditionally that was what a workman took to work. His wife made it for him at home, wrapped it up in pastry, and he could carry it. He didn't need a knife and fork to cut it. He could hold the pastry at each end, so it had just pastry at each end, and he his way through it like this. It was very practical. And then, and then you throw away the ends. And then you throw away the ends, it's just pastry. Or if you're hungry, then you eat the pastry ends as well. But th this, I don't think anybody would eat a whole beef wedding. <laughs> this is the kind of thing where if you went for a... If you went for a big sort of celebration dinner, for example, no. so it might be to celebrate, I mean, it might be a dinner after a wedding or something, or yeah. celebrate a meeting of uh, your old friends from mm. university. Mm. So big celebration dinner, this is the kind of thing that you would, you would do. Mm. Mm. Black tart in the and bacon. What is this? Um, mushroom. It's mushroom. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. But this is the part where um, the chef can improvise, the chef can choose. You can, um, the basic ingredients are the beef mm -hmm. and the pastry. Yeah. And then the chef will put in, you know, whatever, whatever he or she wants to put oh. in. Well, I think uh, because it's something which, it, it, it's a... It's a meal that, or it's a dish that's been eaten in Britain for a long time. So people 100 years ago, 150 years ago, they would have recognized this. I think in some ways survive what I would call the dark ages of, um, of, um, of British cooking. Um, actually, you know, the, the food was not as good as it is now. And uh, the, the sort of general kind of food customs and, and the, the variety of food uh, was, was not great. Um, but there's been a real renaissance, I think. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of, of interest in food, actually. Of interest in good quality food to, to buy. People that enjoy going and buying good quality food. British people's interest in food was sort of woken up, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were lots of people for a long time who were not very, they were not, weren't that interested in food, and they were stimulated by this uh, this kind of um, uh, internationalization of uh, of um, of food. And these days, it's um, you know there are there are so many television programs about food. Probably one of the most well-known uh, food programs on British TV is called the Great British Bake Off, and it's the Great British Bake Off. Three years ago, mm -hmm. oh. is a young woman called Nadia Hussein. She's really a fantastic baker. Oh. And she, in fact, after she won the Great British Bake Off, she was invited to make the 90th birthday cake for the Queen. Comparatively simple. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah, yeah, it's very simple. Yeah. And. Originally, this, um, this pudding was conceived for people to eat during the period of Lent. So in the, in the period before Easter, when Easter. people are eating no meat and no fat and uh, having a very restrained, very simple diet mm -hmm. in the period before Easter. So this was something which was invented so that they could enjoy something tasty but simple. Yeah. And this this sort of um, pie, which the, the filling is, is an egg custard, basically. Mm. Mm. A custard that's made with eggs, mm. um, which is, again, is, is, a, is, is quite a traditional sort of dessert. Mm. And not difficult to make. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you, if you, you, you can go around it in a fairly short, <laughs> fairly short time. So, for... You know, for centuries, people have been looking outside and looking overseas. Uh, where I come from in Bristol, in the, in the west of England, um, there was a guy who, who left Bristol in about 1485 or something, and he went to America. Um, and so, I mean, of course, there were lots of Europeans who sailed over the Atlantic to America around that time in the late 
15th, early 16th century and so on. Um, but one of those guys was, was from, from my hometown, was from, from Bristol, uh, John Cabot. And uh, there were many people like him who kind of just set out to find out what the wider world was like. And then they came back. And so you have this sort of, you have this internationally finding out this discovery of the, the world outside and then people coming, coming back to, to Britain and telling other people all oh. about it. Um, so uh, for better or worse, I think, I think Britain has always had this kind of, you know, it's been conscious that it's a, quite a small country mm -hmm. in some ways, small island, but that it, it goes out and discovers the world and then it comes back and tells people all about it and so on. Maybe that's, that's the explanation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> right. Well, there is no sort of, I mean, tea is very important. Tea is still very important in, in Britain. But there is no tea ceremony. There, it, it's not like that. There's no, there's no, um, there's no ritual uh, about tea. You just drink it. Now I'm going to do something which my mother told me I should never do, mm. okay, which is this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah.